Welcome back, everyone, to the EFI Hardware Podcast. Good to be here. Today, well, we're tackling something I know a lot of you tuning folks run into, batch versus sequential fuel injection. Yeah, it's a common point of discussion. Now, look, since you're listening, you're probably already pretty dialed into the EFI world, so uh, we're going to skip the one-on-one stuff and jump right into the, you know, the technical detail. Exactly. The plan today is to really lay out what makes batch fire different from sequential. Look at the pros, the cons, mm -hmm. especially like for performance builds. Right. And just uh, full transparency here, hmm. we are AI voices from yeah. EFI Hardware, but all this technical info has been thoroughly checked over and uh, human approved by our engineering team. Good to know. All right, let's get straight into it. Batch fuel injection first. What's the, um, the fundamental concept? So with batch fire, mm. the main idea is it's firing injectors together like multiple injectors, sometimes even all of them. At the same time. Yeah, pretty much simultaneously. And crucially, it does this without really knowing or caring exactly when each cylinder's intake valve is opening. Okay, so the fuel sort of sprays into the intake runner and just kind of hangs out for a moment before the valve opens. That's a decent way to put it, yeah. It's yeah. staged, like you said before. And you know, this isn't some newfangled idea. Think about all those Bosch systems and the ones derived from them back in the, what, 60s, 70s, 80s. And I guess the advantage there is simplicity. And for the ECU, the computer running it all, it doesn't need as much information coming in. Okay. Fewer sensors, maybe? Pretty much. A batch fire system, fundamentally, it just needs attached signal. Basic engine speed, that's the core input. So less wiring complexity compared to uh, some other systems? Definitely. Fewer wires running to individual injectors or needing super precise cranking cam position info, generally speaking. Okay, I think I've got a good picture of batch fire now. All right, let's switch over then. Sequential fuel injection. What's the key difference here? The absolute core difference is timing. Individual timing. Each injector fires on its own. Independently. Exactly. And the timing of that spray is synchronized, or at least the aim is to synchronize it, with the opening of that specific cylinder's intake valve. Ah, so it's trying to be much more precise, get the fuel in right when the air is rushing in. That's the goal, yes. The yeah. idea is you get better mixing the air and fuel because you're spraying into moving air. Makes sense. And uh, the other goal is to reduce something called manifold wall wetting. Wall wetting, that's fuel sticking to the intake walls instead of going into the cylinder. Precisely. Fuel droplets hitting the port walls instead of staying nicely atomized in the airstream. Sequential timing aims to minimize that. Okay, the goals make perfect sense, better mixing, less wasted fuel on the walls, but that sounds way more complicated to achieve. Oh, it is, you're absolutely right. Sequential systems need a lot more information and more control. Like what specifically? Well, you need to know exactly where the camshaft is. So typically a cam position sensor is required, or sometimes a really sophisticated crank sensor setup can figure it out. Okay, so camshaft timing is critical. Yep. And then you need individual control circuits drivers for each injector and the wiring harness to match. Right. Dedicated wiring for each one. Plus, the ECU needs to be programmed with a lot more data. Things like your exact cam specs, how quickly your injectors respond. Injector dead time and flow rates. Exactly those and the engine's firing order, of course. The software managing all this is uh, significantly more complex. It needs detailed cylinder-specific info. So tuning a sequential system, it sounds like you need a much deeper grasp of how everything interacts. It's not just more fuel. Absolutely. Getting the programming right for sequential, mm -hmm. there's just less room for error compared to a basic batch setup. Okay. Now, the big question for a lot of our listeners, performance. When we're pushing engines hard, how do these two methods, batch and sequential, really stack up? Yeah, this is where it gets uh, really interesting and maybe a bit counterintuitive for some folks. How so? Think about how much time you have to actually inject the fuel needed as your engine speed, your RPM, climbs. Everything happens faster. Right. The window of time for each combustion cycle gets shorter and shorter mm. for both systems. Okay. But here's the thing. A batch fire system. Theoretically, it could be spraying fuel almost any time during the engine's full 720-degree cycle. Because it's not tied to one specific valve event. Exactly. Now, compare that to a true sequential system. Hmm. Strictly speaking, its injection window is limited to the time the intake valves actually open. Let's try and quantify that. Say you have a performance cam, maybe, what, 220 degrees of intake duration? Something like that. Yeah, a fairly common performance duration. In that case... A strictly sequential system might only have about, hmm, let's see, 
roughly 61% of the total cycle time to inject fuel compared to what batch could use. Wow. Okay, 61%. That's le that's a lot less time. Yeah. Does that mean you might need bigger injectors for sequential to get the same amount of fuel in at high RPM? That's definitely a factor to consider. If you're rigidly sticking to only injecting while the intake valve is open, then yes, for the same power level, you might need a physically larger injector, a higher flow rate injector, for sequential compared to batch, assuming similar duty cycles. Is that how it always works in the real world when people are actually tuning these things? I mean, don't tuners often start the sequential spray a little before the valve opens and maybe keep it going a little after it closes? You absolutely hit on a key practical point there. Yes. Yeah. In reality, Many sequential tuning strategies do exactly that. They cheat the window open a bit earlier and close it a bit later. Okay. But when you do that, you start to, well, you diminish some of the theoretical purity of sequential injection, right? Yeah. You're spraying fuel when the valve isn't fully open or when it's closing. Kind of like batch fire again, in a way. It starts to blur the lines, yeah. You reintroduce some of that fuel potentially sitting there which sequential is meant to avoid. So if tuners are doing that in practice, what does that mean for actual like peak horsepower? At wide open throttle, is there a big difference? You know, based on our experience, what we see in the field, mm -hmm. at the top end, flat out wide open throttle, the difference in peak horsepower between a well-sorted batch fire setup and a well-tuned sequential setup is often Surprisingly small. Really? Minimal difference. Often, yeah. When you're demanding maximum fuel flow, just getting enough volume in there quickly becomes the main challenge. And the super fine timing nuances of sequential tend to matter less right at peak power. Okay, what about fuel economy then? In a performance car, maybe one that sees some street driving, is sequential noticeably better? The real efficiency benefits of sequential injection, they mostly show up at lower speeds, part throttle cruising, the kind of conditions where emissions regulations are strictest. Ah, okay. Which kind of leads back to why sequential became so widespread in the first place, doesn't it? It was mainly about emissions, wasn't it? That was a huge driver, yes. Yeah. Meeting those increasingly tight environmental standards, especially with things like unburnt hydrocarbons during gentle driving, that's where sequential really shines from an OEM perspective. That precise time delivery helps ensure cleaner combustion under those conditions. Right. For users who want that finer level of control, maybe they are concerned about part throttle behavior or emissions, or they just want the most advanced capability. And those more advanced ECUs, they're designed to handle all that extra information we talked about. Yes, they have the inputs and the processing power to manage individual injector timing based on precise engine position. And to run one of those, you definitely need the right sensors feeding up that information, right? Yes, that's critical. You absolutely need accurate signals from a crank position sensor, and importantly, a cam position sensor. Those tell the ECU exactly which cylinder is on its intake stroke. Gotcha. And EFI hardware provides those sensors too. We do. We offer a range of high quality crank and cam sensors designed to integrate seamlessly with our ECUs and provide that precise data needed for accurate sequential timing. Okay, great. So if we were to boil this all down, yeah. what are the main takeaways for someone trying to decide between batch and sequential? The best system really depends. What's the engine being used for? What are the main goals? Pure power, drivability, emissions. What's the budget? And how complex does the owner or tuner want the system to be? That's a big one too. Sequential adds layers of complexity in setup and tuning. It's about matching the system to the specific needs of the project. This has been really insightful. It definitely clears up some of the common assumptions, I think. Thanks for breaking it down like that. My pleasure. You know, our aim here at EFI Hardware is just to help people understand this stuff so they can make the right choices for their builds. And for everyone listening, we hope this discussion helps clarify batch versus sequential as you work on your own projects. Definitely check out the EFI Hardware website. You can see the sensors we've talked about that support both strategies. Yep, lots of info there. And remember, as AI Voices here, we're committed to providing technically sound, human-approved information for the EFI community. Thanks again.